Okay, Baruch Hashem, here we go, Chavar Reb Nachman, Reish Pei Beis, we're speaking about seeing the good in every single person, about seeing the good in every single situation in life. And we said that the greatest good that you have is your soul, and that's already inside of you. That's something that you have, it's intrinsic to you. You can't run away from it, it's always there. You know, Peter Pan used to try and run away from the shadow. And sometimes we try to run away from our own soul, but you can't ever leave it. It's intrinsic to who you are. It's really the core of who you are. It's you. And therefore, it's important to know that no matter what happens in your life, it's always there. It's always going to be there. And we said that's what it means. As Zamra Lodakai the Oidi, I'm going to sing to Hashem, Dafka sing to Hashem through my ode, through that little ode, that little bit inside of me that's completely pure, that can never become tarnished, no matter what happens. In Yiddish we call this the Pintal Yid. You heard of the Pintal Yid? The little spark that's inside of us, that can never be sullied, that can never be impurified, that can never be contaminated, no matter what happens. And usually when you say that, the person says, no, but Rabbi, like, if, you, if you know what I, what I, what I did, then, uh, I'm, you know. No, no, no. You haven't, you haven't lost it. No, no, if you knew what I did, then, no, no, it's completely there, it's intact, it's pure. That's such a chizik, that's such a, that's such encouragement to know that. And that place inside of me, when I start to discover it, that's the ultimate good point. I can start to sing to Hashem, I can start to come out. And we mentioned yesterday that Rav Nachman told his Talmidim and Rav Nassim wrote this part in the brackets that Rabbeinu would tell us to live with this Torah. It's just, he didn't say that about any of the other Torahs. But Dafki here, that Rav Nachman would caution us, you have to live with this lesson of always seeing the good, seeing the good in yourself all the time, seeing the good, living with that good. It's so important to live with that good. And that has a way of pulling a person back even from the darkest places, no matter what he's gotten involved in. He can always come back. He's always bringing himself back to the good. It's like a ray of hope. You know, the... The... Sasemis, his grandfather, Chedusha Rim, says famously in the first brach of Shemun Esrei, Boch HaTu Hashem, Mogain Avraham. The shield of Avram. So he explains that what is the inner meaning of that line? The shield. What's the shield we're referring to? It says the Chedusha Rem, the shield that we're referring to is that my soul has a shield that's on it. The deepest point of my soul. That's called Mogain Avraham. That Boch Ato Hashem Mogain Avraham is that there's a place inside of me that's protected entirely that can never be penetrated. That's the Mogain Avraham. That's the pint of the yid that can never be penetrated. That's the place that's pure no matter what. That's the elakai neshama shemosat b'tahayrohi. That pure nekuda. And we're already in Cheshva now, which means we're already moving on the way to Chanukah. I'll tell you another sasemis. One of my favorite sasemises of all time. In the name of his grandfather, Chedush Rim. That we know in the Chanukah story that the Gemara there in Shabbos that they went into the Heichal, that the Greeks went in and they went looking for all the oils and they made all the oils impure. Shalom Kedra, come on in. And they, they made everything that was pure, impure. And what happened? There was one Pach Shem and there was one vial of oil that they did not find. Right? And from that one vial of oil, there was chaismai, it had the chaisim of the kain gadol, it had the protection, it had the shield of the high priest. Of course, that means that it had the shield of the high priest, it had a shield of purity, it had a shield of what the kain gadol represents inside of me. And they didn't find that from that one vial of oil, we filled up the menorah, and the menorah, of course, lit, was only enough oil for one day, and it stayed lit for eight days. So the Chedush Yerim says an amazing thing. It says, like, Tysus is already talking about this. Like, where, well, why didn't they find it? <laughs> like, where was it exactly that they didn't find it? They found all the other oil. 
But where was this one bottle? Like, it was hiding under the rug or something? Taisa says it was in the ground. It was buried, it was somewhere hidden. Chudush Yerim says, you know where that bottle of oil was? It was right in front of their eyes. It was on the floor. So why didn't they find it? They found all the other oil. The Greeks came into the day, Samekdash, Mamish, right here. They found all the oil, and they made all the oil impure. And this one vow, why didn't they say, it says Chadush Yerim, it was right in front of their eyes on the floor. Why didn't they see it? You know what the Chadush Yerim says? That vial of oil represents the Jewish Neshama. They could never find it. It was right in front of them. But they could never, they could never touch it. It was there. But it was impenetrable. It was Mogain Avraham. It was a place that could never be made impure. Ever. That's the Azamra Lulakai Ba'oidi. And you have to know the whole way of especially learning Hasidus is building up your neshama, spending a lot of time talking about what your neshama is and the fact that your neshama could never be basically messed up. The way of the Baal Shem Tov is to change our focus in life, to be, some, to be somebody who works and lives from the neshama and everything else will follow sweet afterwards. Don't worry, I'll fix all my stuff and I'll fix all that. Don't you feel a lot more inspired to fix things when you feel like a soul? Because you feel infinitely more powerful. If I feel like a, you know, a nebuch, a shlomazel, a nobody, you know, a body who got involved in all sorts of stuff, how much do I really feel inspired to go and fix something? You know, the same body that got involved in all sorts of garbage doesn't feel so inspired to go fix anything. But to the degree that I know that who I am is a neshama, we'll talk about this a lot more in the Tanya, that that's who I am, then I'm a lot more inspired to go and change the world. Especially in Rabbi Nachman, there's going to be such a focus. And that's why this prayer is like the, 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 the point of the dreidel that everything is spinning on. This is the password when you get up to heaven. Reish Pei Beis, Azamra. Is that I am the neshama, and there's a place inside of me when I knock on that door, and they say, "What is a guy like you doing in a place like this?" You know, you know what goes on up there. It's very exalted. It's, it's palaces, endless beauty, and vistas of, of, of chambers upon chambers of treasures. Beyond, beyond, spiritual treasures, treasure houses, going deeper chambers and deeper chambers, chambers and going into secret passageways, deeper, deeper intimacy and revelation and connection and, and, and depth and, and intimate realms of connection to Hashem, the Infinite One. And we get up there like, you know, and Hashem does a an audit, I call it, when a guy, you open the guy's phone, and what is it called when you look at the history? history? And it says, nine and a half hours, nine hours and 32 minutes, fortnight. Three hours, 47 minutes, social media. Two hours, this, and has like a pie chart, and it shows you exactly what you've been doing, browser history. So Shem looks at this thing, and he's like, what is a guy like you doing in a place like this? By the way, Hashem doesn't say that. The angels say that. The spooky ones. What is a guy like you doing in a place like this? Do you know what, do you know what this place is? You think you belong here? Look at, you, look at your browsing history. Look what you've been up to. You haven't been involved in exalted things. You've been watching cyber human beings doing all sorts of stuff and getting a golden gun and... and it's already in a good situation. So what are you going to say? You're going to say, Azamra, Lalakai Ba'idi. Shem, there's a place inside of me that's totally pure, that was never involved in anything except looking for you. And that's your code to get in that door. There's a couple codes. The first code in the door is four you know, the codes have Hebrew letters. So it's men, 
Aleph, Gimel, Aleph. Remember that one, okay? Mem, Aleph, Gimel, Aleph. Just remember that one, okay? That's gonna be the first code getting in, okay? And then, there's other codes that you need. Okay, Chavra? So one of the codes getting in is, is Azamra. Azamra Lelakaiva Odi, okay? And Ibn Abba would tell us to live with this Torah. It's a big one. Don't forget this one. Azamra Lelakaiva Odi. Okay, now we're going to talk about davening a little bit. Okay, in the few minutes we have left. Says Reb Nachman, look in some Vida, you should know. Shemisha Yocho Lasais Elo Hanigunim. A person who could make these songs. And remember, what are the songs being made out of? The songs are made out of seeing all the good points in your life, the good points in other people. Because songs, music is comprised from taking the good notes from the bad notes. All of these songs, the Hainu Lalakeit Hanakudas Toivus, to take all the good. And pull them together. Not just good inside of me, but I want to find the good in every single person. Finding good in the Jews around me. Pulling the good together. All the time good. Just bringing good and good and good. All the time. Even from those members of the community that are doing averas, Hashem Yirachim, that are involved in not good things, that are doing... Looking at not nice things, maybe dishonest, maybe angry people, but I want to find the good inside of them. Always looking for the good. I want to see the good. It could be they don't even know about Shabbos, they're not keeping Shabbos, they're going against Shabbos, whatever it is. But they did good things, and deeper, they have an Ashama. You know, Drake has an Ashama. If anyone knows him, I want him to come for Shabbos. I'm inviting him to my house for Shabbos. You know, come over for Shabbos. We'll talk about it. You have a neshama inside you. There's mamash and neshama in there. It's big stuff. We're both from the six. So there's already a connection. <laughs> Besides the fact we both have neshamas. Nei Hashem. But you know, the six is the six. So it's already, it's already a big connection. Don't worry about it. Come on over. Let's talk. So when you start finding the good in all of Kalal Yisrael, and really all of humanity, who yochel is spal lifne omen? Abnachman just dropped another bomb in this Torah. A person who's able to see the good in other people, he should be somebody that davens for the omen. He should be a shaliyot tzibu. Who should go up to daven mincha, to daven Meir, to daven shachris in yeshiva? The person who learns reish pei beis. A per- no, because he's going to explain this. A person who learns Reish Pei Beis, he should go, you know, Mincha, Mincha, who's going to make a Mincha? Okay, yeah, yeah, go down Mincha. But now I'm saying, whoa, you know what it means to be a Shalir Tzibu? To down for the Amid? You should be somebody who lives with this concept of always seeing the good. Now, I just want to read you from Shulchan Ara, Tov Kuf Pei Aleph, in the Halachas of Rosh Hashanah, says the Shulchan Ara, specifically in the Ramah, in the Ramah, says the Ramah, Yedaktiku, a person should be very careful. He's talking about who should daven for the Amud on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the Yom Neroim. Says the Ramah, Tovkuf Pe Aleph, Sif Aleph. You should be very specific as a community, Lachzer Acha Shalich Tzibur, to find somebody to daven for the community, Hayoyser Hogan, the most appropriate, the Hayoyser Godel, and the biggest person, the Torah Umaisen Toivim, the biggest person in Torah that you could possibly find, and the person who does the most good deeds in the community. Says the Mishnah Baruch, Yedaktiku, you should be very particular, Nagu Lavar Lifneateva, who should go in front of the Teva, means the Bima, who should daven for the community in Shul? Parnosim umanhigim, the people that are leaders of the community. What specifically about them being a leader of the community should make them do, to go to the front of the Tzibor? Sheyoidim bitzar hador, because they know that people go through challenging times. And when you 
are Rabbi Rossman. And you know about all the challenges that people go through. And when you're somebody who's a leader in the community, and people don't just come to you to say like, you know, you know I need basic things, but come to you and say, you know, life's falling apart, help me. Your heart starts to go out. And you know about what everyone's going through, and therefore you're somebody who could feel for Klal Yisrael. V'hainu davka k'shem ne'emonim u'maginim al-ador u'merutsim la'am and they're people that are specifically in, favored by the community. Everyone loves going to them because they help them. U'bavonosena rab medorazeh fine. Hayoisa hagen look at the Mishnah verse says now the most appropriate person and anyone who helps if somebody helps somebody go up to Davin who's not uh, such a big tzadik and pushes him up there because he wants to go and like flex his muscles and show everybody and okay, my beautiful voice or I'm going to force my up there for different honor, whatever it might be as someone helps that person get there look at this ki'ilu geizel toiv minakaha He's stealing, notice the Russian, tov, good. He's stealing good from the community. And in the end, he's going to have to pay for it. He's going to, he's going to have a, a bill up there in Shemai to pay for that. And it's not Pasha. He should be someone of Torah. And the, the Ramah goes on, what else should he have? He should be 30 years old. He should be married. It says he should have a beard, a full beard. He should, uh, this is time of Yom Narai, but it applies to the whole year, the idea behind it. What's going on? Why is there so many qualifications to down for the Amr? You should have a nice voice, it says. What's going on here? The Mishnah Bura says something interesting. If someone helps somebody who's not appropriate go and down for the Amr, he's stealing good from the community. Why is this? What's the good that he's stealing? Let's go back to Rav Nachman. Says Rav Nachman, a person is able to live with Reish Pei Beis and always find the good in other people. He's the one that's appropriate to go up and down for the Amun. Says Reb Nachman, Ki amispal lifnei ha'amun, he's called shaliach tzibu. He's called, what's shaliach mean? The messenger, the representative of the tzibu. V'tsar shiye nishlach mikol ha'tzibur. Not he's just the representative of the tzibur. He is sent by the community. What, what's that mean? He's being sent by the community. Dehainu. Shitzarach. Look at this. This is so deep. Shitzarach shiyekabetz. That the shaliyah tzibur is the one who has to gather together. Kabetz, like kibbutz. To bring together. Kol mekuda toiva. All the good. The Shaliyah Tzibor is the one who's being sent, who's taking all the good. Meaning he gets up there to Davin, he looks back, he looks, and he says, how am I seeing all the good? And he's meditating on all the good of every single member that's standing in the shul, and he's spiritually pulling all their good points together. He's calling it all together. He's being macabates. He's gathering all the good of the entire community together. And he is like this funnel that's channeling, so to speak, all the goodness of the community into a tube that's just shooting it right up to Shemayim, to Hashem. And therefore, like the Mishnah Baruch says, if a person who goes up there to Davin is not fitting, and maybe God forbid even has enemies in the community, so he's certainly not looking at the good, He's holding all these good points back from getting up to Hashem. And therefore, the Mishnah Bura says, it's like you're holding back the good. You're preventing all that good. Because when good goes up, good will come down. And the person, like I'm not saying, is living with Azamra, living with Reish Pei Bey, is living with this Inyan of Azamra, the Lakaibe Oidi, that I'm going to sing to Hashem with that old, with all that good. And he's always looking for the good, for the Nikud Teva. He gathers all the good together of the community. And he's he's pooling it, and he's and it's it's becoming like this this tsunami of good that he's putting into a pipe, like taking the United, entire Atlantic Ocean, putting into a funnel, and letting it come out of his mouth to Hashem. 
the Chol HaNekudas Toivis Yu Nechlolim Boy, and all of the good become encapsulated in him because he, the person who is the Shlir Tzibor, is able to see the good. So he becomes like a receptacle for all that good that's able to take all that good. And remember, all that good, what does that good represent? Music. All that good is this symphony of all the Jews. He's creating this amazing, he's like the ultimate DJ, the ultimate, the ultimate Tiesto, Kaviyachl, Lahavdil, taking all of that good, making this ultimate mix tape of all of the good of all of the Tzibor. And it's inside of him. And he gets up and he's davening with all of that good. He's sending all that good and he's a symphony. We can't always hear this. But in Shemaim they hear it. And all the angels come down to listen to the tzaddik who's davening. Or a Jew that just lives with Reish Pei Beis to see the good. And all of that good is comes streaming out of his mouth and goes right to heaven. That's called the shaliach tzibur. He has to be have this level of always seeing the good. Look at this. Wow. And when a person always sees the good, and you represent Reish Pei Beis, you represent seeing the good as Zamel Makabi everyone's good will be drawn to you. That's why when you're with a person, who always, even just psychologically, when you're with a person who sees the good in you, you want to be around them. You feel like pumped up just being with them. And what's really happening metaphysically is that good that's inside you is getting drawn to that person. So when they come into the room, you walk over, you want to see them, you walk because you see that they see the good. But a guy who walks into the room who's always looking at your negative, you want to walk the other way. So it's because the good inside you, you feel like it's not being recognized, so you run away from that person. But a person who's seen the good, it's te'ev may love. The good inside you literally as a, as a taiva to, to go to that tzaddik, that it should be included in the tzaddik. This is talking about the great tzaddikim. And all of us who are living with Reish Pei Beis, that's what Rabbi said, to live with this. Always be someone who's looking with the good eye. Umisha Yochalasa is Neguna Manir Lael, person to make this music. The Hainu Shiyoch Alon is Kolam Lachav Schus, to judge everybody favorably, like we started the whole Torah with. I feel it was a Kalim that Rishayim, even the wicked people. That's why when it comes to the big Tzadikim, everybody feels Hamish there. You can have guys that are low lights, they come into the Tzadik, they just feel, ah, I feel at home here. But Nachman had all sorts of wild people around him, because they felt like he's finally giving me a chance. By the way, when you go to Uman, Hashem should open up the, the skies very soon. Yeah. Uman is the most crazy place in the world. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. It's crazy. It's literally like the highest tzaddikim and just like drug dealers and crazy. Why? And they're all like Bayrodeinu, hanging out there, guys, like smoking and just, you know, feed up. And, and you walk in there, like, oh my God, Rebain, like, this is the tzaddik is here. What are you guys doing? Like putting your feet up and smoking and like, dirty jokes. But Rav Nachman, it's, it's cool. Because they know he's our Rebbe. Don't worry. <laughs> we don't want people to be taking dirty jokes and smoking and stuff. But there's something about Rav Nachman that has this ability to see the good in the biggest low lives. That's why Uman is crazy. It's literally the craziest place I ever went to. And you feel it. It's like red, the craziest music when you're there. It's like people just smoking blunts and, 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 and the house music blasting on the side, like, what is going on here? I remember getting to the airport and there's some guys like, uh, you wanna like take back like some like illegal stuff for me on the plane? Like, bro, what's up with you? Like, we were just hanging out in Uman together and, and, and now you want me to like take back your, you know, contraband? I'm like, I love you, bro, but like, you know. <laughs> Didn't Rabbeinu like help you a little bit? And he does. But people have a hard life. And there's something about the tzaddik that can go all the way down, all the way down, and even find the good in those people. The tzaddik is always looking for the good, all the good, and we should, we should be doing this also. You make music from that. Zehat tzaddik she'oiches v'madrege zoyis hu yochol yoiz chazam. 
And we'll talk about this tomorrow, what it means, a chazan. That's why it's called chazan, because a chazan means to see. The chazan means you see the good. Like chazon, vision. Chazan means that you see the good. We should be zayin to this. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow.